Welcome everyone to the Model Frontier. Today we have Pack 7 of Agora Models Build the Titanic. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. That way you don't miss a second of any of my great content. So, last issue, we started putting some details onto our engine, and we built the second engine completely. Um, today, we got a lot to do. We are going to actually, we're actually going to start working on some of the mechanical parts of the engine room, as well as putting details on our second engine, and by the end of this issue, we're practically going to have the engine room done. So, we got a lot to do. Again, not a lot to modify. But, I mean, this is going to be another case of you do what you want to do. You don't have to do any modifications. You don't have to do any painting on this if you don't want to. I personally like how the model looks as is, so I'm leaving things alone for now. So before, But before we get back to it, let's answer last time's Titanic trivia question. So if you remember correctly, my question was, what did lifeboats number 6, 7, and 8 all have in common? These three lifeboats had one thing in common. And that is each lifeboat contained 28 people. That's right, those three specific lifeboats each held 28 people, which is still significantly lower than the 65 people that it could have held had they filled those things. So all of last stage was, all of, all of the last pack was mainly about getting all these nice details onto your engine, onto your port side engine. Remember all that? All those pipes and everything? So as you can imagine, this pack is us gonna start doing that to our other engine but before we do our first titanic trivia question for this pack is what was the name of the building which housed the white star lines offices in central london was it a townhouse b oceanic house or C, London Star? We'll find out the answer at the end of stage 34. So let's put this engine aside for the, mo for the time being and bring over our incompleted engine. So now, as you can imagine, we're going to be doing everything on kind of the opposite side, but we're going to do the same things. So first, we're going to start off with these two parts right here. They are directional. They do have, you know, de-indentation, so they can only go in one way. Um, obviously, you'll have two sides, one that looks like that. And one that's kind of like this. It's this side that's going to stick out, obviously, because this is the less detailed side that you don't really want to see. So. Now this, this piece is going to go into the holes here. It's going to be hard to show you because of the black, but. It's going to go into the holes here and here. And then this part is going to go into this hole right here so as always we're gonna put a little bit of glue onto some contact points obviously I want to put some glue on the peg but I also want to put some glue on the base here just so that there's a little something more so as I've said before in this build the more glue you get on the contact points the more contact points that it glue on it the better a hold you're gonna get Part might be a little tricky to get in there. Tweezers. 
push it down into place. And we're going to do this part, which has a D shape, so it can only go in one way. flat end of the D is facing out, so it'll go in this way. Just like that. those two pieces in now they want us to put on these parts so just like before you're gonna go on the in and out of both of these and again you got to make sure that when you put them into place you get them set at 90 degree angles they need to be so if you're looking at it like this when you put the part in, which is going to be tricky to show on this without me having the glue going, but they can't bend inwards. They got to face 90 degrees going up. So, I'm going to do this. Because otherwise, you'll run the risk of them hitting the piping. So, just like before. I mean, they are supposedly different, but I don't know how to tell the difference. If you know, uh, feel free to mention it, but I definitely cannot. So we're just going to put some glue on the pegs and in the space between the pegs. So now I'm going to take my tweezers. I'm going to put gangway into place. Okay, so once we got that into place, we're going to let that sit for a little bit to kind of get in good position. And then we're going to go, I'm just going to go right down the line and do the remaining seven. Um, since this is a little tricky, I'm not going to show it all on camera, but I will uh, show it to you when it's done. So go put them on again. Make sure that they are 90 degrees like that, straight up and down. Once you're done with that, I'll meet you back here. Okay, so what am I telling you? That was highly fiddly to, to do on this. I mean, the trickiest part is being able to find a place to hold these when you're putting them inside. Um, I tried using my curved tweezers. They didn't work so well, so what I ended up doing was using my straight tweezers with very little tips, grabbing them by here, by the actual gangway, and kind of guiding it in trying to fit it in with my other my hand on the other side um, it's not exactly the most scientific way of doing it but you know what it worked so we're gonna be able to move on so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble this auxiliary motor and the first part we're gonna put in is going to be got this little pipe right here which we're going to need to fit into these two holes here. So we're going to dry fit first. Okay. Now we see how, that, how that's going to go on. I'm going to put some glue 
under the pegs here. And here. And we're going to fit this into place. Make sure you're doing this just a hair differently than we are, but I think this is the better way to do it. Because now we have to put a piece in on this end. And it's going to be... It's going to be hard to show it to you, but it's this little pipe piece. It's going to go on the end here. Put a little glue on the tip there. It is directional. It will only go in one way. Like that. Now this is the auxiliary mode. This is the auxiliary motor for the starboard engine. And just like on the port side, it's gonna go into these two holes right here. Um, so for this part, I'm actually gonna put the glue right into the holes. We're going to fit our piece in, just like we did on the port side. Just like that. Now the next piece I want you to put on is the double-ended pipe and it's going to go on this side and obviously it's going to go into these holes here and here. Now this is directional. There are differences uh, in these holes. These two are a little bigger than these two so this can only go in one way. But if you're ever confused about it, this part goes closer to this end than the other end. So. Since these are pretty big holes too, we're just going to put some glue right in them. And then we'll put our pipe in. Just like that. Now the next pipe they want us to use is going to be this really thin one with these, uh, I don't know what they're called, but the ball joints on them. And this end with the double, with the two close together, is going to go closest to this side. And there are pegs along here that this is going to go into. So, because this piece is so small, uh, we're going to put our, I'm going to put my glue on the actual part. So we're going to put our glue on the pipe itself, not the holes in it.
there you go, that pipe's in there. Now they want us to take this pipe with the indent, like that. And it's going to go into the holes here and here. And the indented end is going to be sticking closest to this side. Once again, I'm just putting some glue on the pegs, and I know my lighting's terrible, guys, but we're gonna get them into these holes here. And there you go, just like that. Put that to one side for a moment. Because now we gotta assemble. Now we gotta assemble this piece here. We gotta make sure of what direction it's going. So we do need to keep this handy because we gotta check that it's going in there. So since the flat side of the D is pointing, of the D-shaped hole is pointing this way, we want to make sure we put this in right. So, because you want this part, you want this round part to be in the front. the front piece we got that in place now we're gonna put the piece onto into this hole right here right here in front of the this piece There you go, now that that's in place, we can go to our next section. Still sticking on this side, we want this straight pipe here, and it's gonna go into these holes on this part, like that.
Just like that, we got that pipe in place. Now we need this, uh, this pipe with a bend in it. It's gonna go, obviously, in these parts up here. But just like before, it's only gonna go in these three holes here and kind of be hanging off. There we go, just like that. Oh, we missed a section. We missed a section. Stand by, we missed something. So... It's not terrible. We have this pipe here. It's a straight, like, L-shaped pipe. And it's gonna go in this hole behind here and down to there. So, yeah, I kind of messed that up, but it's okay because we can, we can easily get these in here. It does go over this one. There is a groove right there where it goes through, so it will go over that one. Okay, there we go. That was a fiddly piece to get in as it was, so try to make sure you do this in the right order and don't mess up like I just did. And then we also got the big pipe, which I also forgot to put in. Um, but just like before, I'm going to put the two ends into these two big, huge holes. So let's put some glue into the holes because they're just nice and big and begging for it. Put the piece in. Stand by, I gotta go push it in hard. There you go. The big pipe's in, and now we're ready to continue on from where we should have been. Now this next part tells you to do things in a pretty strange order that we're gonna try to do something different with, because we had a problem with this pipe the last time, and I'm going to try to fix that now. So first we're going to try to put this piece on, and it's supposed to fit in here. So once again, we got a big, we got two big holes to put these in, this piece in, so we're going to put the piece, we're going to put the glue right in the holes. Like that. Like that. Now, as weird as it is in the instructions, they've got this little piece of pipe. Now, this is the piece that I was talking about that they wanted you to put on here first. But when you do this, they basically got this piece of pipe just kind of hanging off into space. As you can see here, it's actually going to end up attaching to a piece that we put up here which we don't have yet in this pack. 
So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off on putting this pipe on until we get that piece in. So for now, that's all there is to do in this stage. Okay, so stage 34, we're going to put the engines off to the side for a moment, and we're going to do some building for parts that are going to go on the base. So we all remember this section here. Um, with the keel patterns facing up, you're going to want... We're going to first put this middle section on. It's going to go right down in here. So it's going to go in like that. And now, we're going to put these two parts into place. They're each held together with EP screws. We have a bigger one and a smaller one. Now the bigger one goes on to this side, the smaller one goes on this side, and each one has a keyhole pattern, so you can only put them in one way. There we go, that part is now on. Now next we gotta make a couple of pipes. So now we got all these parts to put on, to put onto this. Now, the way they tell you to do it, they want you to put the pieces onto the pipes and the pipes into these. We're gonna do it a smarter way though. So we have to orient it like this. We're gonna actually put these smaller pieces that come off these pipes, we're gonna put them into the pipe first so these are directional they only do go one way start with this piece here Put a little glue on it and it's gonna fit in right here the glue a second to catch on that and this piece this bit of piping here you want the pipe cl the peg closest to the middle here so there's a peg right there that's pretty close to the middle Again, it is directional, so it is the only one that'll fit in that hole. Put a little bit of glue on it. It's gonna go out this way. So there we go, just like that. Gotta fit in there just like that. And now we'll put the pipes that we were put that they were expecting us to put on before onto these. So this first pipe, we have plenty of glue on our stick here. We're gonna put a little bit of glue on this end of it. And this valve is gonna fit into this hole right here. Make sure you get it straight. Like that. And then this pipe is going to attach right into here like that.
just like that. Oh. Gotta wait, gotta make sure we don't break it off. So once we got that done, we need our base back. So we're working, we were working on this side, and now we're going to be coming over to this side. So we have a thing with a keel pattern. We got to make sure we get all these things into where they got to go, so stand by for one minute. Okay, so if we're looking at if we're looking at the way it shows in the instructions, it's gonna go on the inside here. And then we've got two holes to put these things into. I gotta pull this aside for a minute to take the to get them into these holes, so one minute. So there we go. That is a tricky little bugger to get in there. And then we're going to secure it from the bottom with an EP screw. So now we got that in place. So now we're going to put this aside because now we got to build another thrust block. Just like our first one, step one is we're going to put the main part of the thrust block together. Put some glue into these holes here. And just around them a little bit to give these uh, to give these something to grab onto. Is directional it will only go on one way so I'm just gonna snap that into place like that and now just like before they want us to make these pipes for it but unlike before I think we're gonna take a similar tactic and put the pipes in individually where we need them to go like we want this pipe to go into this wait which side of the thrust block do we want here we gotta make sure we got it right Okay, so with the thrust block definitely facing this way, this part should be facing towards here. This pipe's going to start off by going in there. Um, actually, it does fit in there pretty good, so we're just going to put a little glue on the end. Actually, I'm even just going to dip it into the glue. I'm going to put it in. get into position like that and then we're going to take the other side that would go in that I'm going to dip some glue on there Some glue on both ends of this pipe. And join them together.
Sorry, I had to take it away because I had to see what I was doing. So, just like that, now we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. There we go, we got the piping on the thrust block in. Now over on this side, we have a little hole over here and we're just gonna put in, it is gonna be so hard to show you this, but you know what this is, it's this little teensy tiny bit of piping that we had before. Um, again, there's a part where it flattens out and that's the end that's going to be pointing down so gonna put our gonna get our tweezers I'm gonna grab it by the end that's gonna stick down put some glue onto our peg here It is D-shaped, so it will only go in one way. Just like that. Now bring our base back over. Just like before, same directions and everything. We're gonna put this bit of pipe, we're gonna put this thrust block into our holes here. Hold on, stand by. Sorry, I had to clear out that hole. So because we're, I'm doing it this way with this thing on there, some of these holes got a lot of got some wood glue in them. So you just got to make sure that you, you know, get those cut, you know, fully cleared out. Uh, easier to do if you do it beforehand. I screwed up and didn't. So now that we got that thrust block in place. And it looks all right. We're gonna hold it into place with two EP screws. Sorry that was a little tricky to see, but I had to be able to get the screws into that. So now we have this part, which is going to go into the hole right in front here. It is a keel pattern. It goes one way. You probably want your tweezers because it's going to be a tricky fit to get it in there, especially if you've got fat fingers like I do. Once you get that in place, we're going to hold that down with an FP screw. 
Yeah, I know. You thought it would say EP, but nope. Rolling that down with an FP screw. Now we're going to put the finishing touches on this section, and it's all going to be basically on this side of it. So first we're going to take this piece, which is like a springy looking thing, and we're going to put it into place. And it's going to go into this tiny hole right here. It is directional, it will only go in one way. Like that. And then we're going to take this bit of piping here. And it's going to fit in like this into this hole right here. We have another part that I can't find at the moment. I'll have to keep an eye open for it in a minute. But it's base, but it's essentially this little piece that goes on the same place right in here. And then the last thing we have to do on this thrust block section before we go back to our engine, we have this little call box looking thing that we have to put in. to this hole over here. Again, it is directional, it will only go in one way. With that out of the way, we can put this to the side and get our engine back. So now the first thing we're gonna do with our engine is we're gonna put on another walkway. So with the engines facing this way, we're gonna put our walkway on here. We're gonna get some glue on our stick and put it into these holes here. And then we're gonna put our walkway here into place. walkway is now in place. Next we're going to take this part here and it's going to go into this hole right here. And again it is D-shaped so it will only go in one way. It's just like that. Now we're going to put in this piece, which is going to go into the two holes, two holes right here in the back. Or just like on the other side, these kind of hang out. Now, we're going to go back for a minute because now we're going to put in the piece that I said we should wait on. That little L-shaped um, 
the L-shaped, what's it called, the pipe that's just like an L-shape. We're gonna put that on now. It's going to have one end go into this pipe. The other end is going to connect into that one. Just like that. Now I've got one more piece that I need to figure out where it goes. So hang on just a second here, guys. I missed a part on the section we were just working on. You guys are probably all yelling at me. Pay attention. You're missing something. Goes into this hole right here. It's very tricky to see because of how much I got blocked. I got it blocked with my base. There's a hole there. This looks like a uh, one of those old school microphones. Well. It's tough to see it, but a little microphone, it just kind of goes right in here. I think I missed this piece on the last build, the last section, too. Now Alright, and with that and our engine, that is all there... With that and our engine, which we just finished up, that is all there is to do in this stage before we continue on, our Titanic trivia question, if you remember, was what was the name of the building which housed the White Star Line's offices in central London? Was it A, Townhouse, B, Oceanic House, or C, London Star? The answer is, it was the Oceanic House. That's the name of the building that housed the White Star Line's offices in London. So stage 35, we're going to be moving away from the detail work on our engines for a bit and focus more on the mechanical components of our engine room by putting together the gearbox, which is going to be the thing that turns our engines and our propellers. However, before we start this, our next Titanic trivia question. Stonier and Company, or probably Stonier and Company, supplied the Titanic with some of her A. Artwork B. China and Glassware or C, exercise equipment? That answer will come at the end of stage 36. So for the first parts of our gearbox, we want two things. We want this piece of the gearbox here. And we want these pegs. And we're going to want to put, now the first thing we're going to want to do is put these pegs into the four holes. So one hole here. And then the hole here. And then one hole here. One in here. Push those down a little bit. We're not gluing these down. Now keep that in mind. These are not getting glued down. We want these to be able to move. Next. 
We want the four flatter cogs, and they're all just going to go right onto these things like this. Now they will not lock into position. They're not going to connect together, so don't worry about making them lock in. Wait, so these two will lock into place. These two on this end will lock into place, these two will not. Now our next pieces we're going to want are, they're going to be these ones, 35E, and you're going to want to put these into the holes here, and the teeth should interlock with your A cogs. And also make sure you get the D shape facing the right direction. So on this side the D should look like a D, on this side should look like a backwards D, and on this side the curve should be facing up. Now we want this cog, and it's going to fit into this hole. Um, both ends are the same, so it doesn't matter which direction they go. Um, but they want the, it looks like they want the D to fit in this direction. Now, the next thing they want us to do is to lubricate. To, they want us to lubricate all this. Now they provided us with some lubricant and a Q-tip. Okay, so I'm going to just stick this into the lubricant. And they say to apply the lubricant to the teeth of the cogs and to the shaft. I'm going to go do that and then I'll come right back to you. And once we got all that lubricated up, they then want you to put some lubricant on this hole, which, we've, which I've gone ahead and done. Now we're going to take these two small sections, these two small cogs, and we're going to fit them into their po proper places. So one's going to go in here. Between joining these ones, this other one's going to go into this oval here. Connect those. So once we get those in place like that, um, they obviously want those lubricated. And then we're going to fit the second the covering over this part of the gearbox. Now this is going to be a little tricky to do, but it shouldn't be too tough. Like that. That'll hold pieces into place. Now we're going to secure that down with CP screws. And when we're doing this part, we're only putting into seven of these holes. They recommend that you do, they want you to do it basically a little bit at a time to make sure that you don't pinch anything tight. So 
So we got them started. I'm going to go around and tighten them all one by one. Now to check if the gearbox is working, we've got our, we've got two of these shafts, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one end in here. Doesn't matter which one, but it does gotta go in a certain way. Now, if we turn it clockwise, all three of these sockets here should rotate. If we turn it the other way, only the outer two should. We did that right that is working so that with that done that is all there is to do in that stage so now we're going to start stage 36 and this is going to be a big one ladies and gentlemen because we're finally going to be taking all these things we've been working on separately we're going to bring them all together and the engine room is going to really start to take shape but first we got to put together our steam turbine. So we're going to start with this, with these parts here. And let's see which way they want us to put them. So we have a, so now we're just going to try to find how these go in. Okay, so they're going to fit in one way. They're going to fit in like this. Um, you'll feel them kind of clip into place the way they should go. Once we get them in there, uh, we're going to hold them down with our AP screws. We're going to put two screws into each one of these. goodness that was tough so obviously the one screwdriver that came that you get as a free gift with this is too big to fit into those holes so you really do need to get a really thin screwdriver this probably came from another partworks model might have even come from this one who knows but you definitely need to get a smaller screwdriver to fit down into those holes Next, we're going to take all these pieces here, and we're going to be putting these into position. So first, you need to get these to line up the way they want you to. Now, kind of this way. these pieces which have a d-shaped hole so they can only go in one way and they should they're pushed to fit so they should kind of fit in like that like that then we're going to take our big piece here like we're gonna fit we're gonna fit this into these holes here and here to the point where these are sticking upwards like this again they're not telling you to put any glue on these so you can if you want I'm not gonna do it because they are pretty tight fitting in there so I think it'd be okay
drink. Got those into place. Now we're gonna need. Now we're gonna put this to the side. We're gonna bring over the base of our engines again. Now with our engine room base, we have this box here. We're gonna put it in. It's gonna go into these three holes with the with this end facing towards where the propellers are gonna go through. And once we got that in there. That we're going to secure down with AP screws. Now with that part on, we still need to stay on the bottom here because now we've got this piece to put on. Let me zoom out a little bit here. So next we got this piece to go on and it just kind of fits in right on here now I'm now I know you're probably yelling at me saying why aren't you extending your part why aren't you extending your flooring out further well that's because this section here I feel it's all gonna be kind of hidden away by the engine stuff and be on the inner part of the ship so we're not actually gonna see all this so we're not going to really need to mess with it. But it does have to go on there. And it does have to be secured down. With, you guessed it, AP screws. They're going to go in from the bottom. Now that we got that on, we're going to bring our engines over. Now, there's two things I want you to look at for these engines. Number one, all these feet here should be flush. There should be no gaps anywhere on them. We don't have any gaps there. On that one, on our port side one. No gaps, so we're good there. They also want you to make sure that the um that these uh what are these called? These green things here, these flywheels are as close in as you can. Um, mine are. If the yours aren't, they do show you how to fix it. So now we're gonna take our port engine, which is. So we're looking at it from this side. So our port engine is, if you're doing it my way, it's the one that has the parts sticking up. We're gonna put it into place. And it should fit into the holes just like we got, just like we've been doing. If you're like me, you've been storing yours like this. And once we get them in there and everything's fitting correctly, you see the flywheel, well I don't know if you can see it, but the flywheel is connected right to the thrust block. We're gonna secure the we're gonna secure this side down with our EM screws. And because they are M's, yeah that means we're dipping them in some oil first. Now with that engine attached, they want us to do, to fit the propeller shaft into the flywheel and through the thrust block and everything. We're going to go a little out of order though. We're actually going to put the starboard engine on now and then we'll feed all, the, we'll feed all these parts through at the same time. Same thing, put the engine on and then we're holding it all in place with 
these AM or EM screws. Now that that's in there, we're going to take our propeller shafts and we're going to feed them into the thrust block, through the thrust block, and into the flywheel. guys so I had a little mishap with this thing um, I lost the flywheel on my port side engine I believe that's port yeah on my port side engine I lost the flywheel when I was trying to put the shaft in it did break on me so fortunately what I'm gonna yours should work fine but mine is broken I do got a a replacement coming but we're gonna continue the build anyway um, so you can see if we go to this side we can turn our engines and parts are all working really good it goes backwards it goes forwards or whatever direction it is we'll find that out later So now the next step they want you to do is very basic. And I've kind of already done it on mine, but it's basically you're going to take this one pipe that was kind of just hanging out loosely. Um, there's a little hole on the engine. And you're basically just going to stick the pipe into that hole. It, pra it practically goes in by itself. 
sense, but you're probably just going to do that automatically without even thinking about it. So there's that for you. And with that done, that is the end of stage 36. And now we're going to answer our Titanic trivia question which, if you remember correctly, was Stony A and Company up supplied the Titanic with some of her A. Artwork B. China and Glassware or C. Exercise Equipment and Of course, the answer to that is B. They supplied the China and Glassware for the Titanic. So with stage 37, we're going to begin putting in some of the, we're going to begin actually putting the motor in uh, for our transmission. This is going to be the mechanical part that makes our engines turn. So let me zoom in here real quick. There we go. Before we do our Titanic trivia question for this section, we're going to do a true-false question here. And the question is, Captain Ed Edward J. Smith was the last known Titanic victim to be found. And it's a true-false, so we're going to just leave it there for now. So now the first step, they want this, uh, they want the... So the first thing they want us to do here is to make sure that our middle cog here faces a very specific direction so they tell you to take one of these and just turn it so it's kind of facing like that so it's gotta be kind of facing in that in a that way direction so then they want you to do that because now they want you to take the motor which is stationary. They want you to fit it in to the cog. So now we just gotta get this piece to go in here. And obviously it will only go in one way, so we might have to make some minor adjustments. So you might wanna leave this part in there just to adjust it a bit. You're basically going to want this main shaft, this big part, like solid part, to be going towards the bottom. I'm sorry, so it's going to go in kind of sideways with this part on the left hand side. So you got to make sure you get your piece, your D shape right. Just like that. If your thing matches, so it's just a matter of getting these to turn until you can slide the motor in. Now, if you got that engaged right, you won't be able to turn this anymore. Actually, they want this a different way. They want the red on the the red cable. They want on the left. And the black they want on the right. So I stand corrected. They want the red cable on the left and the black cable on the right. So we gotta flip this around, basically.
Just make sure your red cable's on the left, your black cable's on the right, and the engine's engaged. So, the motor's engaged again. These should not turn past a certain point. Now, once we got that, we do need to unravel this. Because now we have to put on this backing piece. No, we're putting on this backing piece. And obviously the wire is going to feed through here. Feed the wire through carefully. Fed through, put this, the housing covering over the engine. Shouldn't be that tight a squeeze. Yeah. It is going to be a little bit of a tight squeeze to get that in, but it will go in just fine. And as you may have guessed, we are going to secure this down with some AP screws. Just like that, our engine housing is on there. It should be flush with this part. So if you have to push a little bit, don't hesitate to do so, but it will fit in there perfectly. Okay, so now we have to add this piece, which is how we're gonna be mounting it to our hull section. So I'm gonna go on the bottom here. Once again, So it's going to go like this, it's going to attach on here like that, but we got to feed the wire through this hole again, so I'm going to feed the wire in, it's a little bit of a squeeze to get it in there, but if you chew it right you should be able to get it all the way in, yeah we got some, it's going to, it's a matter of pulling it all the way through, like that. Then we should have it in there just right like that. And then of course it's going to be held in with four AP screws. So the next thing we got to do after we get the screws in is they've provided us with a small shaft here. They want us to fit it in. They want us to fit it in to the port here. Now keep in mind, pay attention that one end of this has a D shape, the other does not. It's the D shaped end that they want us to feed through here and into 
and attach it into this. It should fit firmly into place like that, and when you get that in there, that is all there is to do in this stage. So our last stage is going to actually test out all of our engines and see how they work. And we are doing that by introducing the circuit board that's going to go into this to be our test board. Um, first thing is to make sure that this switch is in the middle. Now why is that? Well, if you didn't know, there were... Obviously, you know the Titanic's propellers could go in two different directions. They could go forward and they could go in reverse. Uh, the thing is, when they were in reverse, only the two wing propellers would go would go on, would be on. The central one would not turn. Now, our motor does take that into account, as we've seen. This is how we're going to test it out. So, when you go in this direction, you're going full, you're going ahead. When you go this direction, you're going astern, basically forward, reverse and obviously stop. So before we do that though, we need to get our engine room. So here's our engine room and we're gonna be working in this area here. They want us to attach this to our engine room floor. He wants to attach our motor to the engine room floor. And they want us to run the wire through this hole here. Now again, because I broke the piece, because I broke the piece to my, uh, the flywheel to my one engine, I'm going to still show you this, but I'm going to very loosely attach the motor. I mean, it doesn't look like it'll be that hard to take it off. So now you need to feed this this um, shaft into your motor housing as you're putting it in. So you're just gonna kind of turn this until you can get it in there. like that. And then this central shaft should be attaching into this part here. Then we're going to attach it to this thing from the top with, you guessed it, AP screws. So now with our motor in place, the next thing we're doing is checking out a bunch of things before we, you know, do a test run of our engines. Um, the main thing they're wanting you to make sure of is that these, these pieces here are free to turn around or free to go in and out. They don't get blocked. Because um, obviously now we can't turn it because we got the shaft in here it won't turn until we actually provide power to it um, and obviously you don't want to mess this up if you're you know not ready for a test if the test run isn't good so but our test run our, I've tested this out many times it looks good so I think we're ready to go on so now the motors run off a USB-C cable um, they do provide you with one I already have one plugged in so I'm just gonna use that plug it in to the board and now we're gonna plug the motor let me turn this around here because this is the side that we're working on that, is, that we have that's working 
So we're going to plug the motor. We're going to plug the motor into the board. We are on all stops, so it shouldn't move. Run it in there so that it clicks. And now if we flip this switch, our motor should come to life. So let's see. There you go. Board, reverse. And if you look, you'll notice this pipe. I don't know if you'll be able to notice it, but if you look in Ford, you see how you can see in the video kind of how that pipe is that shaft is turning along with the engine. If we go in reverse, that won't turn. And again, if this was attached, it would do the same thing. So the engine is working. We have our engines attached. The engine room is functional. That's all there is to do in this stage. That's all there is to do in this pack. And before we go on, before we conclude the answer to our Titan trivia question, if you remember, it's a true or false question. Captain Edward J. Smith was the last known Titanic victim to be found. Well, that one should have been pretty easy for you. The answer to that is false. The distinct honor, if you want to call it that, of being the last victim to be found goes to a man named James McGrady. He was the last person to be found from the Titanic disaster. So that was a lot of work we did. Wow, and we got so much done. I mean, now the engine room's really starting to look like an engine room. Uh, we'll, next issue, next pack, we'll probably have a little bit more to do left on these engines, so don't get rid of this just yet. I know we're all excited to be moving on and, and getting this uh, mechanical part done. I'm excited that we now actually have something that is actually working and moving in motion. So... This was a great issue. I'm glad we got it all out of the way, and I'm glad it's all done. So, before we go, your next Titanic trivia question. In which ship was Titanic Bandmaster Wallace Hartley's body returned to Britain? Was it A, the Arabic, B, the Olympic, or C, the Californian? Of course, the answer will come to you next time on the Model Frontier.